I didn't think it was that loud. So I have just arrived today at German Auto Works where we were here last time doing a review on the GT4, or we can call it GT4 anyway, just over there. But today we have an array of one series and they all have a different story. Let's find Jay. And here he is. And uh, wow, what is that? Welcome to Lever Bar TV. <laughs> So what I want to do is, is maybe point with it as well. Okay. You know? So Legend. if people you know, want to see, I'll just go. <laughs> they might not be able to hear me, but. Uh, so right, in front of us, mm -hmm. well, today we just had our second Cars and Coffee meet, which went really well. Thank you for 100%. everyone that came. Um, great array of cars. But here we have three One Series. Now, these all started life as the same thing. They all came out of the factory as standard 135Is, but, what we want to try and get across here is that they all have had different journeys, but they have all been supported by GAW. Okay, so just straight off the bat, out of the three of these, this one looks practically basic, like it's just come off the dealership apart from wheels and alloys, but is there more? Well, yeah, up until yesterday, this was pretty much a standard car. Mm. Um, this is actually my own car. Cool. Um, yes, I did crash it at the front here, so you know, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> So basically, this is the most standard of all the three, mm -hmm. and this is what I would call the starter pack. Sure. So we've done wheels, tires, AR1s, uh, we've done uh, MMR sump baffle, mm -hmm. and we've done uh, rod bearing shells. It had done 120,000 miles, this car. Wow, and in terms of sump baffle, what exactly is the... Why are people putting a sump baffle on a car on an so, M55 anyway? So, yeah, if you've ever seen uh, an M55 oil pan, it basically has no baffling in it. It's almost just like a bucket I see. full of oil, and it's about this long, and, you know, you've got six and a half litres of oil. Sure. Uh, it doesn't take much for that to slosh around, especially when you're out on track. Sure. So what the sump baffle does is there's a pickup in that sump, and... Ordinarily, it's just a pickup in a big hole. The sump baffle basically encages that intake mm -hmm. and it allows the oil to always be around the most important thing, which is the oil pickup. Wicked. When you're under heavy braking or heavy G corners, because it's encaged, it's mm -hmm. keeping an amount of oil in that area. Wicked. It then has trap doors, which will allow oil back in again mm -hmm. once the oil has been sucked out. I see. So going on track on an N55 anyway, it's a must-have. It's an absolute must. Okay. Um, the G-forces that you're going to be experiencing on track, if, especially if you put, you know, semi-slick tyres on, sure. you absolutely need to do that. Wicked, wicked. Anything else done on this? So just... Yeah, so um, as I said earlier, it's kind of a starter pack. So mm -hmm. what we've done is we've sort of given the car a £15,000 budget. Okay. Um, so obviously not including buying the car, but sure. a £15,000 budget. We haven't used all of that yet, but the things we're focusing on is suspension. So we've got, if I open it up, mm -hmm. we've just got some AST 5300s. Okay. You've got the top mounts here. Being the 5300s, they've got external reservoirs. Nice. Um, but they also do a 5200 range and a 5100. Nice. For the, this sort of level of track car, the 5200, which is two-way adjustable, mm -hmm. is probably what we would recommend. Interestingly, we're still running the stock intercooler. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. so we're running 395 horsepower with a stock intercooler. Now, that does need upgrading. Okay. So the last time I took it out at Snetterton, <laughs> going down the straight, you could really feel that the intake air temperatures were going higher than they wanted to be, and it needs upgrading. And something last time, guys, when we came in here on the S55 on the M4, they were still running the top mounted intercooler. Yes. And Jay, in fact, said, which kind of did move a mod off my mod list, that the stock intercooler was fine, but on yeah. this one, it definitely needs an upgrade. No, it definitely does because on the S55, it's a charge air cooler, so it uses coolant to actually cool the, the heated air from the compressor. Sure. And, and, but this is an air to air, so this is relying on airflow through the bottom grill here mm -hmm. going through the intercooler. Now, that's fine if you've got no cars in front of you, <laughs> but on a track day, you're, you're following chasing. people, yep. you're chasing, you're not getting the airflow through sure. the front, and that then overheats. And as soon as it goes uh, above, 45 to 50 degrees it will start pulling ignition timing power. and you lose power sure on the front though it looks quite stancy especially on the front is there any camber we've added there yeah or? so um we're running about three degrees camber on wow. the front and two and a half on the back they're 9j all round 
um, and they're actually 17 inches. A lot of people go for the 18s. I was going to say, but, they uh, did look very, very small. Is that still clear in the caliper? Yes, still clear in, so okay. you can fit the 17. I've actually stolen these off Monty, our E36 race car, <laughs> yes, so that's yes, why they're there. Monty. Um, but oh, yeah, the so other... that is an option then, to yep. still run the standard calipers, yep. but 17, 17s. so essentially you can get your semi-slicks cheaper as yes. well? Yes, yes, so um, four AR1s, yep. um, I think it's around 620 pounds. Wow. Yeah. As opposed to 18s looking close to grand. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Can yeah. you put 17s on the M4? Probably uh, not. Well, uh, <laughs> no, you can't. You can't because the calipers are slightly oh, more pushed he knows out his stuff. for the 380 he mils. Knows yeah. His stuff. Um, limited slip diff. Um, yes. We've actually got one over there, so we can show it, cool. yeah, which would be a good segue. Because those come with an open diff. They do. So out of the factory, the 135 has an open diff. Now, I went on track with it recently, just as standard, because I wanted to see what it was like. Yep. And I ran out of fun in about two laps. I can imagine. Because I was literally going around the corner, and the wheels were spinning it's up, peeling, and yeah. I just had no grip. So what we have here is two diffs. This is a M Performance limited slip differential, and this is from BMW themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so Inside here, we have a Drexler unit. Sure. And Drexler is a word that's thrown around in the motorsport industry. We've got mm -hmm. one in the M4, yep. but actually BMW fitted them to these units, Beautiful. which is really cool. Um, and then here we have a used diff, which is a wave track. So this is a standard diff that's had the internals changed okay. for a wave track. If you ask me which one of these two I'm actually gonna prefer, it's this one. All day long. I, I did All think this, because on my M140, I, I don't know if you guys remember, if you've watched the channel for a long time, I had a quaif, and I know a quaif isn't the same as an open diff, but then on my M240i, it came with one of these, and even though they're not really made just for sliding, but traction off coming out of a junction, this was way more controllable yeah. and more consistent. Yeah. This felt like a tiny bit like an open diff, but yeah. this is still great. It still, it still does exactly. the job. Exactly. So the way I would say it is if you are a um, very rarely go on track days and you're more of a road spirited driver, then a, a wave track is, is fine. But if you actually want a real plated differential that you're going to go on track often and yep. you really need that grip out the corners, this is the way you want to go. No brainer. So for about five grand, this is what you can get. Now, obviously we are not gonna talk about money on this because this is a long-term project and yes. there's been a lot of money spent. Apologies about the front end. That's because it's been on the trailer okay. because it's going on track on Monday. So it's here this weekend to do loads of upgrades. Nice. Uh, but this is Mr. Kitchener's car, mm -hmm. um, Kitchen 96. 96. Oh, I'm what? sure you already Kitchener. follow him because he is Kitchener. a bit famous. And this is what he looks like. This is Kitch, guys. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, I'm really awkward on camera. Hey, y'all, come look at this. <laughs> so, Mr. Kitchener, let's have a look. Now, I will say that Jack is a very long-term loyal customer of mine and mm -hmm. friend, and he's helped me no end. So, uh, massively appreciate you, Jack. 100%. This car has been a labor of love, hasn't it? When it first came to me, it was really almost a bit like this. You know, a bit, say, it had a half cage in it, but it was relatively standard, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so the car, well, I found you online and you, I wanted a wiring loom strip, oh. so I was going to go full cage. And I stripped it all myself and I sent it to Jay. And yeah, it just cost me many And then we fell in love. Uh, yeah, well, I guess that might be a good place to start then, the wiring loom. Yeah, so yeah, this so is literally skinned out, isn't it? Yes. It essentially is a race car. So we've got literally no wiring down the left-hand side of the car. And this is the first wiring loom that I actually ever did on a F-Series car. So let me just get that going so we can open the boot up. Um, so yeah, this was the first and there's been many, many, many since. <laughs> but as you can tell, it's just nice and tidied up. You know, we've got rid of all of the, the telematics control. We've got rid of uh, the amplifier that sits down here. You know, it's all gone. It's just the basics. Mm. Um, but it is, it's not a full, full strip because he still wanted to be able to open his boot. Sure. Still wanted to be able to defrost his screen. Sure. So, you know, there's, what we do is we take what the customer wants mm -hmm. and then modify the loom to that sort of spec. So this is nitrous, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So nice. if you just press a little red button, <laughs> things happen <laughs> and then during like club enduro and stuff you have to put a fire extinguisher sticker on there yeah, so, so that they don't they yeah, don't club so, yeah. the so i have actually raced the car for one race and so we took it up to croft i booked onto the test day for the second race two sessions in rodney came a knocking rodney. rodney wasn't my friend oh rodney uh, l l rodders yeah. <laughs> so it, it 
spun the bearing, seized the engine, that was yeah. game over for that car. I, I remember it vividly, actually. Um, come, car came back in, uh, sat out the back of the garage for a second, and I went, all right, um, go and get the ratchet and a large socket and we stuck it to the uh, yeah, to the vibration yeah. dampener and uh, the, the air box came off and that was pretty much I was like she wasn't she wasn't it? moving she was locked solid and I turned around and looked at Jack and I didn't need to say anything the face was probably something like this oh darling this is good cool. after that E36 went on to win its first race that was a brilliant so weekend was, uh, every cloud miles, yeah it is what it is and the car is back together now exactly. all thanks to Jay Mr. Dobson over there in the corner hiding away as Where always. Is he? Here he is. Yeah. And our good friend, Mr. Fabian, over yeah. Swift. But yeah, these boys have helped me refit a new engine in it. Uh, what else have we done? It's I buckled the wheel on this. My KW decided to start leaking. Yeah, it was, it, it spiralled as it always does. Yep. Late night conversation with these boys. What if I just do this and what if I just do that? And Jay being uh, one of the, like, the dealers for AST Mortons, mm -hmm. it was like, come on, let's get it sorted out. Next thing you know, get the quote through, right, get them bought. Mort on two ways, custom valving, custom spring rates, and custom top mounts. Wheels and tyres, so uh, brand new Pro Tracks mm -hmm. and York Helmet AO52. So a standard setup is a 225, 245. Yep. This is a 245, 265. Wow. Okay. Now I physically can't fit any wider wheels on the front. I can imagine um, they're very, very tight. I'm yeah. sure the internet will probably scream and shout <laughs> at me going, oh, it runs too low, oh, this and that. Uh. Um, I run the car like this and it doesn't rub Wicked. much. So if you look at it here, mm -hmm. that's pretty much they are the same. Yeah. Other than having, you know, a couple of turbos on sure. and a charge cooler and different cooling system, the basic block are pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, so people go, oh, M lights, not M cars. This genuine M car engine, mm -hmm. it's come out of an M2. Sure. I changed it. If anyone wants to argue that fact, you can take the engine out and look at the engine code, <laughs> which is etched on it. Um, so it's a N55 B30 T0. So it is an M car engine. Mm -hmm. um, I picked that up because it has the S55 baffled system on it. They come as factory. Yeah. Obviously, we mentioned about Jay's car with mm -hmm. the MMR sump. Yep. This has got the genuine BMW stuff on it. Sure. Um, the lads helped me fit it in a day. That was wow. a long day, but well worth yeah. it. I'm sure we mentioned on the M4, or well, you mentioned on the M4 last video, the CSF system. Mm. We had a CSF oil cooler on this. It was pants. Okay. Absolute pants. <laughs> genuine fact about it. Mm -hmm. People can get upset all they want. Run this system. I've raced this system, and it works. Fair it's enough. two 19 row oil coolers. Mm -hmm. Standard thermostat. Don't need to go muzzleman, anything like that. The standard stuff works. Another thing to cross off the list, then, guys, because again, sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. You guys are not getting any more YouTube videos because my next video was going to be getting a muzzleman fit, but obviously we don't need to do it. So, can I just explain it a little bit? Yeah, please. So, do. this is actually from an S55. Okay. Reason being is, is this from an S55 because yeah, I haven't so got this on mine. It's Oh, sorry, from the GT4. Okay, now you're showing off. The S55 GT4 <laughs> engine, which is on the M4. Yes. Now that is for where the map sensor goes on the charge air cooler. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's longer. Mm -hmm. Now they did do a shorter version yep. for the M235i Racing. Okay. And that was an N55 engine. Sure. So Jack's got this because Lee bought it for his car and then eventually didn't use it, so we put it on this. Makes but sense. if you are thinking about getting the dipstick for your car, mm -hmm. we can get one that fits. It's a little bit lower and it fits right down here where the uh, throttle body is mm -hmm. um, but yes that is well worth it because mm -hmm. we all know what it's like start up do oh, I have any oil in my car yeah, you have to wait. well you have to let it warm up mm -hmm. and destroy itself before you know that it's got no oil <laughs> yeah, so mate, this, is, this is basically a vision from a, a very close friend mr. Dobson mm -hmm. and he has created something that he used to watch yeah. On the weekends, go into the touring car races, he'd watch the one series going round. He had a one series, and mm -hmm. this car, believe it or not, was Estral Blue, just like mine. And Pre LCI at, as well. Yeah, right? at one yeah. time it would have looked like that. And now it looks like this. So wow. as time went on, Lee basically got the idea okay, I want to build this BTCC one series. Mm -hmm. And he's got all the parts, all of these bumpers and everything, they're all from physical race cars wow. that were racing at that time. Mm. Um, and he's collected all the parts and then he's built this absolute beast of Fair a car. Play. Fair play. Now, there's one thing having the car with the body kit 
there's another thing, it being functional and working. Definitely. And that's what we've been working towards at the moment. But I must stress, German Auto Works has not built this car. Lee has built it himself and he's done so many hours. He's done such a fantastic job of building it. And we've basically helped him along the way where we can. It's what dreams are made of, this wide body one race, series. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So um, if we look back here, uh, one series usually there's a lot more bodywork. I was going to say, yes. Uh, so if we were to remove this rear arch, you would find that Lee has actually chopped so much of the original car wow. away. And what's happened is the rear subframe has been lifted up okay. by about 60 mil, I believe. And what subframe is on there? Because at the back, it looks like he's running M4. Yes, this. very well spotted. Yes. So it started off as a custom uh, M4. It was like a, a, a tubular subframe of the N55, so normal okay. non-M rear yep. subframe. Yep. However, he's now upgraded to a full M4 rear subframe. Wow. Well, so he has made, made it, he's grafted this car together and he's got an M4 rear subframe and an M4 front subframe wow. running a B58 engine. Wow, so this in fact has gone from N55 yes. to B58 yeah. and it's also gone pre-LCI yeah. to LCI2. <laughs> wow, it's, it's, it's... And this has had, what, two N55 engines and a B58 engine. Wow, so this is not just your average Frankenstein build, this is the... Dracula. Yeah. Off. <laughs> and I can't tell you how much work he's put into it. I've it's absolutely fantastic. Insane. Yeah. And and the B58. So there was talks at one point in having a B48 engine. Sure. Um, because the actual touring car did have yes, B48. Yeah. And the benefit of that is that it's going to be further back in the engine bay, better weight distribution. Sure. However, to get the B48 to the 400 horsepower mark, uh, more money. We know that the B58 is a fantastic basis for getting yes, power. 100%. Just look at the track of the car. It is extended 100%. and it is low and the power is almost irrelevant because it's going to corner so well on the track sure. that, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you have 500 horsepower, three or four, you know, this could be running 200 horsepower and probably still lap 100%. this car, 100%. you know, tenfold. So, um, yeah, it's great. If we move on to inside, we can see a few more updates. We've got the roll cage, we've got a, a standard centre console, and then we've got one of our custom steering wheels that we made for him. Wow. Um, yeah. Just need to have a quick look at this, guys. So, where is the aircon, however? <laughs> Jesus. Yes. So, he's got no aircon? No, so uh, that's a weight saving thing. Okay. So, what he's done instead is he's on the passenger side here you can see oh, yes. there's like a little heater yes 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 yeah so that's if it if it needs it it's not air con it's heating if it was um misted a cold, oh, okay that's the main thing so his setup here is a lot further race car than absolutely Jack's. and he's got the aim solo dash not aim solo is it it's the aim mxg 1.2 wow wow uh, and then if we look towards the back we have a fuel cell oh yes i do love it can i just have, where's the uh that thing that ah, I love so much. So that doesn't have it. This oh, car no. does not. So let's, let's, this is a hybrid. So that's actually an air intake and that's a diff cooler. I, I still want this though. I still, <laughs> I still, wow, so the diff cooler is getting air from this. Yeah, so the air wow. comes in okay. and this is called a knacker duct. Yes. And basically it creates a bit of low pressure and air will go in there, sure. it will go down and then it actually goes onto a cooler which is behind this wheel, sure. tucked under where the fuel tank is. Wow. And that's cooling the, the diff. diff down. And the diff in there I assume is going to have to be the same one that's on my M4, right? Yes. Or it won't be yeah, the M yeah, light, same. it won't be those ones. Same. Yeah, sorry, and also it's a gearbox cooler as well, so it's wow. diff and gearbox cooler. Wow. So the engine is out of a X3 M40i. Okay, yep. Um, and I remember the engine just being there, not knowing where it is from. The only reason <laughs> we know it was out of that is because of the certain coolant hoses. Yes. The X3 has a different engine bay to the of 1 course. series, so the coolant hoses were, we were like, why what is that not fitting on? there? And honestly, the whole thing has just been real OEM trawling, finding out what part <laughs> number goes where, and it's imagine. just amazing that it actually runs and, and works. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the spoiler is a genuine touring car spoiler. And this is huge. I can imagine the amount yeah. of downforce this thing is going to be giving him. Yeah, serious. Definitely is. Serious. And just the sheer, the body, the presence of this car is absolutely massive. Where that... is the exhaust? Ha! Come around here, sir. I just, I'm, I, I'm thinking one series, no, no. Oh, dude's got side exit. 
<laughs> side exit. So just like the touring car had, yeah, wow. side exit. Um, it lends itself because the uh, the plan overall is to have a flat floor on here. Sure. So the quicker you can exit the exhaust, mm. the better you're going to have for heat management sure. on your rear axle. Of course, of I've course. done uh, flat floors before where the exhaust comes out the back and mm -hmm. it's basically an oven, yeah. literally to the point where it was melting CV boots. Uh, so okay. he's coming out the side here. That means that the heat is going to be in the tunnel and then it's not around this rear area, sure. which means you can have a lovely flat floor at the bottom. Beautiful. The other question was, how do you fill it up, the fuel cell? Yes. No. So this is still pressurised, essentially. So you basically um, have a jug of oil and mm -hmm. then you've got a pump and this is a quick release. You just pop that on there and it will fill the car up. Wow. Yeah, the reason why is because the fuel cell is out of a touring car, um, mm -hmm. so it's used, but the fuel equipment is uh, very expensive. And sure. also, if you're kind of uh, not a race team, you'll have to carry it around all the time. So this is imagine. almost like a hybrid between the normal filling mm -hmm. uh, and, and sort of being able to just do it on a track day nice and easily. So that is great. Definitely. So you won't be seeing this at Tesco getting its petrol. He's gonna, no. He's going to have to carry around a chugger with him. Yeah. <laughs> the, the carbon roof. Yes. Um, so yeah, obviously one so series. So this isn't a wrap? No, that's real carbon. Wow, of course. Um, so what we did was, Lee wanted a carbon roof. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't one available, or if there is, they're very, very hard to find. Sure. Um, so he wanted to make his own. He got all the equipment, and I came down to help him out, and we sat up for hours and hours and hours. We bought a uh, metal roof from BMW. Okay. We took a mold of it. Wow. And then we did a wet layup with this carbon as a first try and vacuum bagged it and this is the product. So it's it not perfect, amazing, but, but it looks it's amazing. a carbon roof. It's lightweight. It, it saved like probably three kilos, I think. This is absolutely insane. And probably one of the only one series out here. This has got yeah, a very, be. very few one series that has a carbon roof. I've definitely, I've seen quite a lot and I've never seen one at this level. This has got to be probably the the leader yeah when it comes to the one series game and what i would say is like um if you read uh, watch this video please follow jack and lee because mm. um they have spent hours and hours and money and money on doing this stuff and mm. they really should receive more um, 100%. support because what they've done is fantastic and and something i'll say again i speak to both of the boys and i found out from obviously being in the track scene these boys don't gatekeep as well if you ask them advice they will give you the advice they're not going to keep any secrets or anything no. they they're very very good guys and i can't take my eyes off this this charge pipe guys just looks i don't know i don't know where dobbo is but i think we can try and take it home because <laughs> look at the color of that that is beautiful and these cars all run as well yeah so crazy. we are going, yeah, on Monday um, to have fun. We're just going out as mates yep. and we, we're going to go all together. We're going to camp there tonight. Mm -hmm. We're just going to have, you know, a great time. And that's really what I want to do this year mm -hmm. is I want to connect with my mates and customers on track. I want to help people build their dreams. And this is the type of thing that we can facilitate here at German Auto Works. Absolutely beautiful so guys we're probably going to end the video there but how about that for some advice if you want like i said drive up to your track day drive the car to your track day rather put some air take some air out of the tires reduce the pressures and go out all day and then drive home after a mcdonald's this is an option for you if you've got a trailer and you fancy a car that can be driven very very hard on track with no issues at all and can kind of be raced this is what you want. If you're looking for an all-out race car, then look no further. So yes, guys, that has been the video. A huge shout out to these guys, as usual. They are going to a track day tomorrow, but obviously by the time this video goes out, you guys won't be able to get that one, but there is gonna be another track day that they are gonna be supported on. So if you are interested, make sure you follow the page because there's loads more to come. And in fact, I think there's another coffee morning in April. So you can come down, speak to the team and get some tips, advice, and obviously get booked in. But I can't take my eyes off this. Not that, that's Jack just photo bombing as usual <laughs> like subscribe and all of that jazz and i'll see you in the next one take care god bless